Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is one of two iconic rides within Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and quite possibly the most interactive ride Disney Imagineering has ever created. Featuring completely immersive and elaborate sets, a state-of-the-art animatronic, and so much more, it's no wonder visitors to Batuu flock to be employed behind Onaka's completely legitimate business venture that ships and sells quality goods that are totally not stolen based on Black Spire Outpost. Given that Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run was the first ride to open in the multi-billion dollar park expansion, guests and fans have found out that what lies within is far from the usual straightforward rides we've come to expect from Disney. This video is extremely spoiler heavy, so if you've yet to ride Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, consider this your warning. However, if you like the impact technology and want to see how they pulled it off, then you're in the right place. Today we'll take an in-depth look into one of the newest rides at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We'll take a look at the history, turn on the house lights, and pull back the curtain to show you how this ride does it all. So sit back, relax, or stand in a queue line, which you're probably already doing, because this is how Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run works. Much like Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run was one of two highly anticipated rides to open inside Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, both at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Each ride replaced a former land or section of land and extended into a section of off-limits areas. Preparation for the land the ride is within began with the closure and demolition of the Backlot Tour, Lights Motors Action, and the Streets of America at Disney's Hollywood Studios back in 2016, and Big Thunder Ranch and parts of the Rivers of America at Disneyland. From there, land clearing and construction accelerated quickly to meet the rapidly approaching opening year of the Twin Lands. During this time, not too much information was known about the ride featuring the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Originally, fans and careful eyed onlookers believed the Smuggler's Run was the successor of the infamous and ill fated Mission Space at Epcot, given the appearance of four large rings in the show building. Luckily for fans, this turned out to be false. While the building soon enveloped their view of the ride's construction, we could later see that some kind of screen was being loaded into the building, then another, and then another. Luckily, unlike Rise of the Resistance, the ride did not hit many snags in construction due to its relative simplicity. Later on, fans and theme park enthusiasts also believed it could be the answer to the dome screen style ride of Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey located at various Universal Parks, but again, this was not the case. What we did learn is that the ride would be a screen-based interactive experience that would let guests hop aboard and pilot the Millennium Falcon across the galaxy on an end-of-your-seat mission. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run officially opened on May 31st, 2019 at Disneyland and August 29th, 2019 at Disney's Hollywood Studios to media and decent crowds with the new Twin Galaxy's Edge sections. Immediately after entering Onaka Transport Solutions for the first time, fans and media were astounded by the attention to detail of not only the massive one-to-one -one scale Millennium Falcon, but of the equipment out on display inside the mechanics shop. Because of the height of the ride system and subsequent maintenance bays, the queue is designed to not only have high ceilings to create an enveloping queue, but to bring riders and people in wheelchairs up to the necessary height to load onto the ride system. Unlike the extremely elaborate and over-the-top queue of Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run contains a simpler experience but does have a few tricks up its sleeve. While Rise of the Resistance does have the incredibly well-done hologram of Rey and a ride within a ride on a transport ship, guests in the pre-show Smuggler's Run are treated to Command Center's show featuring Hondo. Here, Hondo Onaka appears to us as a state-of-the-art, highly mobile animatronic. Similar to the walking Olaf animatronic of Frozen Ever After, Hondo's electric A1000 figure is on top of a slim moving base. This not only saves space as guests pass under him, but allows the animatronic to appear as if he's walking around instead of being bolted in place. The Hondo animatronic can interact with the screens in front of him, all overlooking a large projected hangar ceiling entrance. This feature is a screen behind a rear window to add some form of depth perception. Now that guests are past the pre-show, they get to the chess room photo op. Here, the iconic chess room is replicated down to every small detail and does have a few small props you can interact with to make the Falcon react. This room is part of the cluster boarding method Disney uses on this ride where multiple groups are brought in at a time, given a colored card and called over when ready. 
Now that we have a basic understanding of the cue and effects, let's turn on those house lights and take a look at the main reason why you're watching this video, piloting the Falcon and how they make it work. After a short video briefing from Hondo on where you'll be headed to work, you are ushered into the cabin where you'll embark on your journey across the galaxy. Originally, fans believed that there would be multiple identical tunnels to multiple identical ride pods where the riders would quickly load, ride, unload, and exit quickly. Instead, Disney opted to create a more seamless method of handling ridership by a little simple trick. The cabin where riders are seated during their adventure is mounted on what's called an octopod motion base, where eight electric linear actuators work together to move or jostle the cabin. Each cabin has its view enveloped by a large dome screen and with multiple short throw projectors. When riders walk to the door, they are loading onto the setup, but what they may not realize is that they are loading onto a large rotating carousel as well. In order to increase capacity, Disney is employing a large carousel that contains seven of these pod, motion-based, dome screen, projector, and ride computer setups. Each setup rests on a slice of a carousel and uses about seven wheels and two motors per pod to rotate and push itself along the round carousel. This allows the motor to be decentralized, meaning that the entire carousel doesn't rely on one large motor to rotate, but 14 smaller ones that can be easily replaced. In addition, the modularity of each pod means that they can be easily maintenanced and even removed should they need to be repaired. But why stop there? Surely we need more than just 7 pods for this very popular ride, right? In order to increase capacity even more, Disney is not just using one carousel, they're using 4 carousels. In total, there are 30 pods via 4 carousels with 7 pods each and 2 ADA compliant pods, one on each side of the ride. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. There are two identical chess rooms as well. Right after the animatronic pre-show, riders are directed to the left or right serviced by two carousels each, which can be opened and closed through the capacity. Riders can load onto their carousel by using the left main tunnel in the chess room or by heading into a themed back room that leads to another nearly identical tunnel. When the doors open, up to six riders file into the pod, sit down, buckle up, and get acquainted with their controls depending on their assigned position. Now that we're inside, we can now learn how the gaming, sequencing, and emotions work. In order to understand the team the pod is working with, when riders sit down, they trigger seat sensors to let the computer know which positions are filled. Given the degrees of freedom the motion base allows, the pod, when loading and unloading, is moved back to line the door of the pod up with the port. When the ride begins, the pod is moved away from the load port and the experience starts. To hide the 1 7th rotation of the carousel, the screen shows as if the Falcon is being rotated out to take off. Since the carousels don't all rotate in the same direction, the rotation of the screen is specialized to the rotation of the actual carousel. If it rotates clockwise, your view shows a clockwise rotation and vice versa. From there, Honda will instruct riders in their positions to perform certain tasks. He will also stay with you and guide you during your mission to collect coaxium from across the galaxy. In order to run the ride, the pod's computer, seated next to the projection dome, takes in the inputs from the buttons and levers inside, it then relays the information to the game, renders the resulting movements and information, which also needs to match the movement of the motion base. This movement profile is determined by what the riders do, what they hit, and more. The computer also controls the reactions, effects, and audio clips that are used during the ride. All of this is done in real time. Shortly after leaving Batu, the right pilot is directed to make the jump to light speed. Here, the motion base tilts riders onto their backs and vibrates to provide the forceful movement you'd expect from jumping to light speed. After arriving on Corellia, Hondo directs riders to follow the incoming train. The movement of the cabin is determined by the steering of the left and right pilot, along with any obstacles the Falcon might hit in the game system. Depending on which positions are filled, the ride may have Hondo ignore certain positions and only address the ones that are occupied. For the most part, the first half of the ride is nearly identical for everyone, but later, the dynamic pieces of the ride come into play. What this means is that while riders may collide with objects or not during the first half, they will always jump to light speed at the same time, but may not return to Batu at the same time. As mentioned, the video shown on the dome screen is being rendered live, and is not a playback of a video like on Star Tours or Mission Space. These methods of dynamic sequencing mean that the ride is aware if there is a need to extend the ride and stall for time or cut the experience short. A method of stalling during the ride is using the Asteroid Collision minigame. 
Upon returning to Batuu, the Falcon may go through an asteroid belt sequence where, much like Mission Space, riders must pilot the Falcon out of the way and back into Black Spire Outpost. This usually occurs when a pod's load or unload time is taking longer than usual. In some cases, you can even see the Falcon skip right past it. Once your pod lands back in Batuu, you'll be in the fifth position of the rotation around the carousel. You'll then rotate back over like in the beginning to the sixth position. The pod will slide back via the motion base and the door will slide open for you to unload. As you might expect, when you exit the ride you're not exiting through the same corridor you entered through earlier, but a replica with only an exit. Like earlier, Disney has created a way for the ride to stall, even when it has already returned riders to Batu. Depending on how you did, the exit portal will use certain effects to show damage through flashing lights, for sparks, audio spills, and flip panels that show physical damage as well. You'll then head down the stairs and through a long corridor that will meet up with the other carousel exits and lead to an exit out to the rest of the park. Disney is no stranger to easter eggs and little hidden features as well as backup scenarios. Fans of the ride have taken the time to play out different scenarios such as not jumping to light speed, trying to purposely crash the Falcon, or not touch anything at all. In most cases, the ride does guide itself somewhat and trying to crash into everything is actually quite hard. In addition, there are some easter eggs that have been discovered, such as the famous Chewie mode, whereby pushing certain buttons prior to the start of your journey, Hondo is completely replaced by Chewbacca throughout your journey. No others have been found just yet, but there are likely many more to be discovered as riders pilot the Millennium Falcon through the galaxy. Overall, this incredibly thought-through ride combines so many small details to create an interactive, custom, and outless galaxy experience. It also demonstrates Disney's commitment to pushing the envelope with some of the most technologically advanced rides in any theme park and will continue to amaze riders for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this small dive into how Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run works. If you still have any questions, you can ask them below and let me know what your favorite ride is and I might try to make a video on it. Also make sure to take a look at our other How It Works videos in the iCard above, featuring some of your favorite rides like Rise of Resistance. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoyed the video, please consider joining our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. So a cast member shared with me that some of the wheels on the carousel pods are actually as wide as 4 feet and weigh up to 900 pounds. And also that the ADA pod is a little bit more intense because on the carousel, they tend to flex if they move too much and the ADA pod is stationary. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.